Hey, good morning, my name is Franklin. I'm a project manager at Sunset Homes, and uh, we're here today to do a blower door test at this project uh, as part of our uh, energy efficiency initiative and our build green certification for our project. And uh, I'm here with uh, Cooper uh, from Four Elements, and um, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit uh, about uh, what a blower door test is and, and why we do it. So welcome, Cooper. Hi. Thank you for Hi. being with us today. No problem. Um, yeah, what we have behind is just the main setup of what you will need to do a blower door uh, test, plus obviously uh, looking around the house and um, filling any major gaps or openings that you may have in the house, just to be able to get uh, the proper um, air tightness that you expect. Um, so first thing, um, we're in this house, just past the drywall uh, stage. And uh, before going forward, we uh, want to make sure that the house is, uh, is sealed, like for air tightness, that there is minimum air leakage. So, and if there is, that we can correct them on time. So uh, Cooper, right? So we have behind here the setup for yep. what the blower door test is. This is main setup for it. So can you explain how it works? So absolutely. What are we doing here exactly? So uh, what this blower door test does? It's got uh, this very large fan in it. Um, we take that fan and we depressurize the house. That'll give us a chance to see uh, where the leaks are because this fan pulling air out of the house will pull air in through any of the leaks that are in the house itself. So we'll be able to see them when we walk around, we'll be able to feel them with our hands, and uh, we often combine that with infrared, uh, with our infrared camera, and you can see through the camera where it gets cold because today it happens to be a little cooler outside, so we can see a temperature difference between inside and outside. Okay, and what would be an ideal result of this lower door test at this time? Uh, so typically when we do these tests at this time, we see the houses sit around three air changes, two and a half air changes per hour. And uh, as a reference for code, uh, the 936 Alberta code prescribes 2.5 air changes per hour. Okay, so uh, there is an acceptance for some air exchanges, right? So Absolutely. We're not aiming for, a, for a perfect tightness, yeah. but there has to be just a maximum of air changes. Absolutely, yeah. For the code, they, they want that to be 2.5. It kind of gives you a better, uh, the, the lower your air change is, the less air you're leaking out when you're heating your home. Okay. So it, it, it means your home is more energy efficient because it's not spending extra time heating the house that's just going straight to outside. Okay, and yeah, today um, we, we expect basically to find what are the major air leakages that uh, needs to be fixed. There is some acceptance for air leakages at this time of the construction, for example, uh, the dryer vents, the, the kitchen uh, exhaust. So those are areas that are not yet are final and you expect some draft to exist there. Doors are not at final, so you expect also some uh, flow of air to go through Absolutely. through there. Yeah. But uh, within that acceptance, right, we are able to identify other areas that should be uh, tight at this time and we can fix them early enough. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. So Cooper, um, how common are these, uh, are these tests, whether at this stage or at final after the house is finished? So how common are they? So uh, they're not common at all. Um, in certain municipalities in, in Canada, they're required. In, in Canmore, they're required. In the city of Vancouver, they're required. Calgary hasn't gotten to that point yet. Huh. Um, we would love to see that because this is something that gives a third party test for, for your home, homeowners. Yeah. Um, they get something saying, okay, well, this house has been tested. It's not just the builder saying, yeah, my work is great. Correct. This is something providing extra to that. Yeah, third party opinion. Exactly. We're going to be back for another uh, test at the end of, of the yeah. project, right? Which uh, at that time, uh, you will have the house at uh, final stages, meaning that um, most of the air leakages that are expected as normal now uh, will have to be fixed then, such yes. as what we mentioned, the dryer vent the kitchen exhaust, uh, the doors uh, um, uh, tightness. Um, what is the benefit of doing at the end and, and what can it help us with? So at the end, uh, when we come in, we combine this with a full energy model and that gives the house an Energuide label. Most people know what that kind of looks like. It, it's similar to the, the label that you see on a, uh, on a stove when you buy it. It right. says this stove is expected to use this many, this much energy per year. Okay. And so this then becomes a label for the house. Okay. We, we will print off a, ter uh, a physical label for the home and that gets put straight on the electrical panel and the homeowner can see that. It'll say uh, this house uses 
X number of gigajoules per year. And, it, and it, the Energuide scale used to be one to 100, which was a bit random and arbitrary, but now it just gives straight energy use. Okay. And it, as an example, one gigajoule of energy is two propane tanks for your barbecue. Huh. So that's a, that, it's, a, it, it's a lot easier to get a handle on what that number is exactly. when you know that it's that tank that's sitting right by your barbecue. And having that certainly uh, adds value to your house and also peace of mind that Absolutely. your house is, is efficient enough. Yes, right? yeah. And that, that label itself is typically used by Bill Green, which I believe you guys are rerolling yes. all your homes in. So yeah. that label itself dictates what level of Bill Green you hit. Okay. So depending on how energy efficient your home is and how much better it is than a typical house, there's certain certification levels in Bill Green. Well, thanks for joining us today. And uh, don't forget to check our blogs for more interesting topics about construction. And also don't forget to check 4Element blogs for inter interesting topics on energy efficiency. Mm -hmm.